In this video, we will talk about the Ozone CI system and about some specific tricks or practices which can be used during the ozone development. So the Ozone CI system is based on GitHub Actions, which is provided by the GitHub itself. We can create some YAML files to define the build and the GitHub will execute all of the builds. So if you go to the Apache Hadoop Ozone repository on GitHub and check the actions, then you can see all of the builds, the build branch, especially the build branch is about uh, building the master and we can also filter the master branch and you can see that okay it's mostly green this is some other master or you can go to the pull request and in the pull request you can you can check the status which is so that the, all of the commits are checked by the ci as well so if you click to the green or red mark you can see the the wills and if you click to the details it shows all of the details so this is a full green build here we have multiple parts you can see that a lot of parts are executed and it's very important that all of these are independent from the github actions so even if we use github actions the scripts are independent so let's check the definition of these workflows so this is the post commit workflow you can see that this is executed for all of the pull request it's executed for all of the push so all of the branches and it's executed twice per day even if there is no commit on the master and these are the separated checks so we have some build and usually they follow the same pattern we have some kind of checkout the npm and maven artifacts can be cached and after that we are just executing this script so this is the part where we can see that this is independent from the github actions because you can execute any of the checks locally very easily you need sh check style so if i just go to the repository and execute the check style for example this is exactly the same which is executed on the github and if the script ends with a non-zero exit code then it shows that something is wrong and the problem is supposed to be printed out on the standard output so it's very easy to check anything locally but there are some other parts oh actually we have multiple tests right we have a, a multiple scripts here Okay. Hadoop Ozone Dev Support Checks and you can see that there are a lot of checks and they are executed at the same time parallel and this is a quick overview but what do we have we have some code style check find box auto the red is a license check we have read unit test we have integration test which is a JUnit test, but it uses a mini ozone cluster, which is a Java class, and it can start a full ozone cluster in one GVM. So this is the integration part, and usually this is very slow. It's three to four hours, so it's executed in, in uh, multiple parts. Here you can see that the client, the file system, the freon, the load generator test and the ozone part. So they are separated to different execution just to make it faster. We have acceptance test, which is a docker based test. So after a compilation, we can start real docker compose cluster. We have an other video about this docker based cluster or how can you start docker based cluster and with robot framework we are executing different command line tools or aws tools to check if it works well and at the end of the build we are just collecting all of this coverage data from all of the tests and we are uploading it so that's what we have and some specific uh, tricks about uh, about the github actions based test so this artifact artifacts link is visible only if you log in to the github i'm logged in so i can see 
And if something is wrong, then you can just download the, the results. So only the failures are included. So usually it's very small, but if there is an error, then, then uh, you can download it. For example, this is a, a test where the acceptance is failed and actually the integration. So I can just download the acceptance zip from here and I can unzip it and check the content. So I already did it, so I can just unzip it. Okay, and you can see that this is specific to the acceptance step, but some kind of reports are included in the artifacts. And you can see that this is log HTML and report HTML. And there is a one very specific trick about the acceptance test. So this is the acceptance test. You can see that we have a lot of executions and this is the log HTML, which uh, is included in the artifacts. And if you would like to check the root cause, there is a red line. So some execution is failed. And the trick is that you should check the last two green line before the red line. So here, this is an assertion which is failed. But here before the assertion, you can see that this is an execution. So the OzonFS command is executed. This is the return code, which is one. This is the root cause of the failure. And after that, the log, the output of the command is saved to a variable. So here I can see the real error message from the command execution. And it's not in the red line, but before the red line. Usually the last two lines before the red line. But this is just for the acceptance test. You can download any of the any of the artifacts. And if there is a failing unit test, then the unit test output will be included in the artifacts. Okay, if you would like to check the last the last status of the master, there is a helper repository, this GitHub IO Ozone build results, which can be used to check the last master builds, which can be easier to check what's going on. So these are the failures. You can see this this is a failure. And this is the okay, this seems to be an integration client failure and if I click to here this is the unzipped version of the artifacts so integration test and here I have all of the outputs if you check out this repository you can even do some kind of graphing to find intermittent tests and other good practice is that if you develop a Hadoop usually you have a fork and all of these builds are executed on your fork as well so, for example, I have some branches to create pull requests. And you can see that before I created the pull request, even before that, I can see the current state of the build. So, actually, this is failed all the time. I, I, I can just check what's going on and what's the problem. This is exactly the same. This is an, this is an old version, so the output is not available anymore but but you can just check so it's a good practice to push your branch wait until the first results it's usually one hour check if it's green and if it's green you can open the pull request there is one other thing that if something is wrong it's very easy to trigger a new build you can try to add this rebuild as a command, but nothing will happen due to some limitation on GitHub. But it will print out a helper text which explain how can you do it, and this is the easiest way. You can just do do a commit with empty content. So usually, Git couldn't doesn't enable to create a commit which doesn't contain any change, but with Allow empty. You can just create a new commit. You can push it, and if it's pushed, the new build will be triggered. And some more words about the failures. So, in some projects, there are uh, practices just to ignore the failures, and this is my favorite uh, quote from The Witcher, which is a fantasy that the evil is evil. Anyway, and I think the failure is failure. 
Yes, there are unrelated failures. For example, if you modify the documentation and it's failing, then it's pretty sure it's not related about your patch, but it's related about the project. So I think it's very, very important to get to, to provide real feedback, which means that we should eliminate the intermittent tests. So if we see some tests multiple times, if it's failing multiple times, the easiest way to, to, to fix it is just uh, disable it as soon as possible on, on the master and at the background we can start to investigate what is the problem. So usually we just commit and ignore without pull request, but we need an issue which, which defines what was the problem, how, how can we know that how can we know that it is an intermittent failure and we should upload multiple logs to make it easy to understand what's going on okay so that was the quick overview of the of the ozone ci system if you have any questions feel free to comment here on the or at the asf slack channel and we will continue from here next time.